How many times has this happened to you? After a long week that just seemed like it'll never end, it's finally Friday. Time to take a sigh of relief, release a lifetime's worth of tension, and welcome the long-awaited sweet, sweet weekend. What to do? So much to do. The possibilities are endless. Do you spend the weekend socializing? Do you stay in? Do you go out and enjoy the nice weather? Do you tackle the mess that is your life and or apartment? Make time for your side hustle? Catch up on some work? There's always Netflix marathons too. All of the above? You get overwhelmed, pull up Instagram to see what your friends are up to, and suddenly it's 9 p.m. on Sunday. Your apartment is still a mess, there's five loads of laundry haunting your dreams, and no quote-unquote productive work was done. Meanwhile, Sunday scaries are creeping in and you feel like you haven't relaxed at all. This is all too real, my friends. We, citizens of YouTube, have long loved morning and nighttime routines since the dawn of time, but what about routines for the weekend? Do we need one? And how do we do it? Here's a very unfiltered and slightly tear-filled weekend in my life featuring 12 steps for how to best navigate your very own weekend routine. Thank you so much to Copilot for sponsoring this video. More on this in a little. To start, reframe what productive looks like. This is the first and foremost important thing we need to do. Before I thought weekdays and weekends were exactly the same, just a man-made construct of time, all existing for me to maximize, put in the hours, and work nonstop. I had no social life, no boyfriend, and no time to breathe. That, to me, was a productive weekend. While I'm grateful for that season of Rowena, I'm even more grateful that I'm not there anymore. As I shared in the slow productivity video, I've completely shifted my perspective on productivity since. A weekend spent proactively being a potato is just as productive as a weekend spent working. Just like how a weekend spent mindlessly or in guilt is just as unrestful as a weekend spent busying ourselves for the sake of being busy. These days, my weekends consist of a combination of me time, friends time, outdoorsy time, work time, and James time. How these are prioritized honestly just depends on my mood and what I feel I need that week, and that's the beauty of weekend routines. They can be whatever we need them to be, so long as we know what we need. In essence, weekend routines help us complete what we need to do in order for us to prioritize what we want to do. After reframing what productivity means to us, it's time to draft a detailed plan that's loosely held. The emphasis is on the loosely held, but we'll get to this a little later. Let's focus on the first part. The more detailed, the better. I usually start by writing everything I want to do down. Am I meeting anyone? What house chores do I need to do? Are there any deadlines approaching? Should I rest? How do I want to rest? Should I work? What do I want to work? Do I need to spend time alone? What is my soul craving? This may sound intense, but it's supposed to be a quick five minute or less exercise, less obsessing, more brain dumping to clear the mind of open tabs. After writing everything down, I underline or highlight the things I need to do, the things I must do this weekend, the things I absolutely cannot wait. There are usually only a couple of these tasks, but these tasks are what will move the needle of quote unquote productivity forward the most. So focus on the needs, then prioritize the wants. Now, in the event that you do have to work over the weekend, whatever you gotta do, have fun with it. Whether you're by yourself or with friends, there's always fun to be had. Here, we're filming an Instagram reel for my dream partnership. I've written this brand down on my dream brands to work with for the last two years, and it finally happened. Hint, they make delicious vacuums. Any guesses? Okay, here's an interesting thought experiment. Try for a weekend to measure yourself not by your output, but by how much fun you're having. Off to the farmer's market we go for some hashtag content. Find pockets of stillness amidst the doing. It's natural that the more fun you're having, the more relaxed you become, and the more relaxed you become, the more you're able to find pockets of stillness amidst all the movement of life. Having lived in New York City for over six years now, solely focusing on work, I feel as if this is the first time I was present enough to enjoy the magic of summers in the city. Perhaps it's from age, perhaps it's from knowing my time in the Big Apple will eventually come to an end, or perhaps it's through embracing slow productivity. No matter the case, this specific day, sitting in the specific park looking at a sea of green, it was as if I was transported to another country. An instant core memory. Life, our thoughts, and everything around us becomes a little clearer in 
stillness. Can you believe this is in New York City? It feels like we're in Europe. It's so beautiful. <gasps> Moving on to giving yourself grace regarding loosely held. Now, by the time I get home from the farmer's market, I'm way behind schedule. There's still filming to be done for this video and for the Instagram reel. But for as stressful as it could have been, I think I handled it pretty well. Having fun while constantly reminding myself that I'm trying my best and that it's okay. Game plans, even the most detailed ones, exist to help us and to serve us, not to make us feel even more guilty, less than, or not enough for doing things that we initially planned. Yes, focus on the few things you need to do and do them well, but don't get too caught up in not crossing off the want to do's. Unless your schedule affects someone else's, which we'll get into, and the many tears in a little. Romina, Romina, how do you feel about your weekend routine? Lovely. I'm tired, it's so hot. Oh my cheeks still pink. Okay, I'm gonna take a shower. Okay, let's go. Oh, I need to go to the bathroom. Okay, I'll be right back. After taking a little breather, it's time to get back to work. Working on the body, that is. While I've always been a big believer that our weekday habits are only as strong as our weekend habits, it has been very hard to actually stick to because, well, it's the weekend, it's time to let loose and veg out. One cannot always rely on discipline and sheer willpower alone to get the job done. Especially when it comes to working out, it's something I've been very inconsistent with. That's too easy for me to skip because I keep telling myself I'll do it tomorrow, but tomorrow never arrives until I found accountability through Copilot an app created to help us reach our fitness goals with support from a real coach who provides personalized support, guidance, and gentle check-ins, along with a program designed to help us build consistency with our daily habits. Let me just say to have another human hold me accountable, that alone motivated me to be accountable and stick with my scheduled workouts. As soon as I was onboarded, I was connected with my coach who asked me about my lifestyle and fitness goals. On top of working out, I also want to wake up early and meditate more, all tasks I can track in app. And I just love how customized and flexible the workouts are and how communicative my coach is. Most importantly, I appreciate how the focus is less on grand transformation and more on atomic habit style, small incremental daily improvements we can do that will compound over time to become long-term changes. By having a coach and accountability like this, Copilot allows us to become nine times more likely to stick with our goals. If you're interested in checking them out, you can click the link in my description to get 14 days free with your own expert fitness and health coach. Now that we're ready to go out, when you're out, be out. As with everything in life, focus on the task at hand. Just like how when you're working, work deeply, and when you're resting, rest deeply. When you're out, enjoy the present and the presence of friends. Especially when you make the decision to go out, allow yourself to have some fun. If you're out and wish you didn't go out, promise yourself you won't say yes to something you want to say no to next weekend. This seems so simple where I'm in life right now, but I remember how it crushed me saying yes to things I knew I should be saying no to and hating myself a little more every time I'm out doing what I know from the depths of my core to be empty and things that I no longer wish to be doing. It sounds dramatic, but it's just parting. Anyway, this was a great evening with friends. However, when Gems and I got home, the real party began. When life happens, let it happen. Remember the loosely held but detailed planning and how I said it was fine to derail from your schedule so long as it doesn't affect other people? Well, my derailed schedule significantly impacted my significant other. Not just from this weekend, but the whole week leading up to this weekend. My plans kept changing and shifting because the demands of work kept changing and shifting. He was very understanding, but as he brought up the events from the past week, how my changing schedule impacted his days and how it made him feel, I couldn't help but feel sorry and sob. Like an actual puddle of water was on the floor. I felt like I wasn't doing anything right, that I'm letting everyone down, and that I'm messing everything up. Earlier this week, I talked to my co-host at Beauty Within about something similar. My team and Vivian, co-host of our podcast, Voice Hugs, jokes that it's nearly impossible to schedule time with me. Though I've known for a while that I'm my own biggest bottleneck in my many projects and ventures, this was not how I anticipated the night to go. But even then, I believe these moments in our lives happen when we're at an inflection point on the cusp of a big breakthrough. Whether you break through or not comes from how well you roll with the punches or not and how you move forward from these moments. 
We can never plan our lives down to the T, hence loosely held planning. Again, so long as you properly communicate with others who may be involved. So when life surprises us, we can let it and possibly even embrace it. Life is either trying to show us something or it's trying to teach us something. Speaking of, our next point is pay attention to the not so subtle hints. Thankfully, James and I were able to talk and hug it out last night. Sunday's a brand new day and I got ready to stop by the office. Little did I know what was in store. I'd even noticed multiple ceiling tiles have fallen onto my coworker's desk and that the carpet was soaked with water until my friend pointed it out. Turns out the AC accumulated too much water started leaking and there was a downpour, a literal downpour. All of my coworkers' desks, computers, and belongings were soaked. We spent the morning cleaning up what we could and as I was cleaning, I couldn't help but muse at how symbolic this event was to what I'm currently going through in my life and the conversations I've had all week. If we leave something unchecked for a long time, sooner or later, it will burst and there will be a downpour like my tears the evening before. Another not so subtle hint from the universe to take action, do something, and level up. It's always darkest before dawn, just like how there's always friction before breakthroughs. I'd like to believe that nothing happens by chance and that the universe is constantly dropping hints for us. Whether we notice them depends on how present or not we are. Moving on to pick up the towel. To throw in the towel means to embed in a struggle, admit defeat. To pick up the towel means to continue, continuing on. Going back to the example of our intro, so many weekends I catch myself drifting on autopilot, not being present, neither here nor there, overwhelmed with guilt that I'm not quote doing what I should be doing and that at some point I throw in the towel, throw my hands up in the air and make a decision to continue down this path because well, I've already lost the time I had. But in reality, we can pick up the towel anytime we want. Saturday night, Sunday at noon, even Sunday at 4 p.m., 10 p.m., we can put in that 10 to 15 minutes to help us feel prepared for the week. And I truly believe we all have it in us to turn our days around any time of day, regardless if it's the weekend, the weekday, morning, or night, so long as we want to do it and know that it's what we need to do, we'll be able to pick up that stinky towel. Or maybe it smells delicious. So don't write off your whole weekend just because it may have started a little rocky. Just like how we can easily fling a towel onto the ground, it's just as easy for us to bend and snap and pick it right back up. Like how I took myself on a little spontaneous date. It doesn't need to be anything crazy. I was just running errands and I had to eat. So I thought, why not make a quick stop to rest my feet, people watch and eat my favorite sandwich in Central Park. And as I was sitting there, I realized this was the first time I did something like this for myself in a very long time. Which brings us to schedule time for empty spaces. While stillness is more of a mindset, making time for empty spaces is actually blocking off days on your calendar to not do anything and just make time for yourself, like what I do for my road days. Quoting Naval Ravikant on the importance of having empty space, if you don't have a day or two every week in your calendar where you're not always in meetings and you're not always busy, then you're not going to be able to think. You're not going to be able to have good ideas. You're not going to be able to make good judgments. It's only after you're bored that you have the great ideas. It's never going to be when you're stressed, busy, running around, or rushed. So make time for empty spaces and take yourself on dates. The last thing to do for your weekend routine, well, it's to sit down and plan for the rest of the week. How to plan for the week? Well, let's do a little recap of this video. The first is to reframe what productivity looks like, then draft a detailed game plan, loosely held. Remember to have fun, find pockets of stillness amidst the doing, give yourself grace, accountability helps, focus on what you're doing, when you're working, work deeply, when you're resting, rest deeply. When life happens, let it. Pay attention to the not so subtle hints from the universe, have the courage to pick up that towel, schedule time for empty spaces, and we rinse and repeat to sit down and plan for the rest of the week. I'm pretty proud of myself for uh, connecting this whole video in a little loop as if it were like a TikTok or a reel. Anyway, how I actually plan for the week deserves a video on its own and it'll eventually be made. But the TLDR version is the first thing I do is to brain dump and capture all my to-dos in my remarkable. Writing things down just honestly hits different. I can't deny it and I can't be away from it from too long. And then I review my calendar and my team notions to add more tasks onto my to-do list. And then 
I add any deadlines and to-dos into my Sansama and schedule them into the week accordingly and proceed to feel a thousand percent lighter. This is just what I found works for me. You can honestly streamline this process and just do one thing and have a to-do list. So this can take anywhere from 10 minutes to an hour. It really just depends on how you like spending your time. I like taking my sweet time, analyzing my calendar, really digging into it and just mulling over it. So maybe it takes a little longer, but end to end, it could take you 10 to 15 minutes max, which just goes to show that no matter if it's Saturday morning or Sunday evening, Spending that 10 to 15 minutes on ourselves can help set us up for a beautiful, beautiful week. And if we're able to be a little more consistent with doing this on a weekly basis, just imagine the month that we'll be able to have, the quarter that we'll be able to have, and the year that we'll be able to have. Isn't that a wonderful thing? I hope no matter what kind of a week you've been having, no matter what kind of a weekend you're having, that you are just being gentle with yourself being true to yourself and know that no matter where you are now, you can turn it around or you can keep having fun and keep doing what you're doing already. But I think if you're doing what you're doing already, maybe you're not going to be watching this video. But anyway, voice hugs to every single one of you. Love you guys. Thank you so much for being here as always. And I'll see you in next week's video. Thanks again to Copilot for sponsoring this video. If you guys want to check them out, there will be a link in my description where you can get 14 days free with your own expert fitness and health coach.